I was born in Cedar City, Utah. Cedar City is a suburban area hosting a population of almost 32,000 people. It is the 28th largest city in Utah. With Cedar City housing Southern Utah University, the average age of any citizen is 26 years old. The majority of the population identifies as Caucasian, with 92% speaking English. Cedar City is a part of the Iron County School District, home to nine elementary schools, two middle schools, and four high schools. I attended Enoch Elementary School, Canyon View Middle School, and Canyon View High School. Canyon View High School is a public institution. It is a 4A school with a population of 1,085 students. The majority of my high school identified as white, almost 86% with 9% Hispanic, 3% American Indian or Alaskan Native, 0.5% Black, 0.2% Asian, and 0.2% Hawaiian Native or Pacific Islander. This totals for a 14% total minority enrollment. At Canyon View, 40% of the students are considered economically disadvantaged, with 30% of students participating in free lunch and 10% participating in reduced lunch. Canyon View has a graduation rate of 88% and a 24 to 1 teacher to student ratio. In high school, I enrolled in many honors, concurrent enrollment, and advanced placement courses. I graduated with 45 credits from Southern Utah University. With my high school featuring a white, Christian, and English speaking majority, I fit quite well within that context. It wasn't very often I interacted with students who were not white, Christian, or spoke English. Because I fit so well with the majority, I had never thought about the privileges that accompany my identity. White privilege seems to be a common topic in education, but Christian privilege seems to be something many take for granted. As I look back on my high school experience, I can find examples of those who were excluded because they did not fit the majority. Many of the Hispanic students seem to keep to themselves and would never enroll in more rigorous classes. With the prevalence of Christianity, especially the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Utah, there were students who fell out of place not understanding certain lingo or customs. During my time in school, my social capital was provided by the clubs, sports teams, and organizations I was a part of. I participated in volleyball, basketball, and track and field in high school, which provided many opportunities to interact with other competitors, coaches, parents, and faculty. I was also involved with National Honor Society, Hope Squad, and the Sterling Scholar Program. These organizations allowed me to interact with my peers, advisors, and education affiliates throughout Utah. The act of attending school to receive a diploma would also add to my cultural capital. Attending high school allowed me to gain skills in mathematics, biology, physics, chemistry, nutrition, computer technology, finance, art, music, and more. With a weekly class devoted to college and career readiness, I was adding to my capital with knowledge that would aid me in my future education and career choice. Because I was involved in so many clubs and organizations, I feel I had an exhilarating schooling experience. I always had something to do or something to report. My social network allowed me to be successful because I had so many people who sought for my success. Over the course of the semester, I have realized that teaching is not easy. Students and teachers alike deal with their own unique biases. It's important as teachers to address these biases in order to change the way we act and think. I want my teaching to reflect the reality pedagogy Christopher Emden developed. I want to incorporate co-generative dialogue, allowing my students to feel comfortable critiquing my teaching and making suggestions for improvement. I want students to co-teach, creating their own lesson plans and presenting their work to the class. I want to embed cosmopolitanism by bringing outside norms inside the classroom and creating a context that reflects the behaviors and environment residing outside of the walls. 
And finally, I will then incorporate the content into my teaching. As I incorporate the five C's, I hope to mute the privileges that may be present in my classroom to ensure that all are treated and valued equally. The topics we've covered in this class have all added to my knowledge base as a pre-service teacher. I feel more prepared for what lies ahead for me and my students. I've come to understand there is no one size fits all when it comes to teaching unique individuals. So many factors play into who a student is and it is important that we show love and respect for every identity. The classroom is full of diversity and to properly educate, we must properly prepare and continually improve.